So how, is an income tax then, as we know it, in the United States, is that a, considered a progressive tax? Yes. Um, and, you know, so we have, we have a federal income tax that is, you know, through the IRS, that is progressive. Um, at the state level, many states have really a flat tax. Um, and uh, so it's not progressive. Plus, if you, if you include in things like sales taxes and other fees and, and, and taxes at the local and state level, most states you look at it and it's regressive. Lower income people pay a much higher percentage of their income than upper people, upper income people do um, in taxes. At the federal level, essentially you add up all your income in a year and the first 9,000 of it is taxed at a 10% rate. So roughly $900, you know, as someone would pay. The next, uh, about $27,000 is taxed at a 15% rate. So there you're paying a little bit more. The next $51,000 up to about $87,000 worth, that the next chunk is taxed at 25%. And then there's a 28% rate, a 33% rate, a 35% rate, again, each on, on each progressive chunk of income. And then above $400,000 of income, you pay at a 39.6% rate. So that's progressive. It's, that's, you know, you're asking each, you know, uh, for each chunk of income, you're paying at a higher rate. So could you explain a little bit about what a capital gain is? Sure. Um, capital gains are, let, let's say I buy a stock for $100, and then I hold on to it for five years, and I sell it for $200. Um, my gain is that hundred dollars. That that's the difference between what I paid for it and uh, what I sold it for. And uh, so you would pay. You know, if it's a long term, you know, it's held long enough like that. You'd pay at uh, a twenty percent rate currently. Um, and uh, back in nineteen ninety eight, uh, President Clinton had signed into law uh, a cut in the capital gains rate from 28% to 20%. So because capital gains are on investments, that's something that someone making minimum wage and spending all their money in a given year is not going to be able to afford. Um, could you, or do you know, I guess, what was the discussion about why rates would be cut on capital gains? Right. There's, there, there are folks who believe that you need to tax um, investment at a lower rate to incentivize more investment um, and uh, Warren Buffett for one has come out and said you know clearly that's not the case you know I, I don't think about how you know what my tax rate is going to be before I decide to buy a company or invest in this or buy this stock whatever I, I invest because there's a profit and to be made and if I make a profit and I have to pay 20 or 40 percent or whatever, um, I'm happy to do that because I have this, you know, but it's certainly not going to drive my decision about whether I should invest. Um, so there's this notion that's been accepted on Capitol Hill, essentially, that we have to keep taxes low uh, on investors, on entrepreneurs, and, um, and we just don't think the evidence is there for that. So we talked about capital gains as a form of money or a form of profit that isn't being taxed the same way that income that you would make in a given year is taxed. And so are there other sort of categories of ways that people make money or have money that are taxed differently from income? Mm -hmm. um, dividends are also, uh, you know, so you own a stock and you get a dividend every year uh, or every quarter, depending on, you know, um, those are taxed at a, at a lower rate as well, roughly at around the same rates as capital gains. Um, they were taxed at zero percent for a while, um, and then there's a you know all sorts of um, advantage you know ways that that um, people can get tax breaks and tax loopholes for investing in certain things, or, um, investing in real estate and, and so forth. And you get to, uh, to the point where people like 
Warren Buffett or Mitt Romney are paying roughly a 15 percent, you know, 14 or 15 percent effective rate. Um, that you know, so the the, the r effective rate goes up and then goes down for the wealthiest people, which is just sort of backwards from the way it should be. The people with the greatest ability to pay, who benefit the most from what all the stuff society provides, um, those are the folks who should be paying at, at, at uh, higher levels, not lower. So how does that fit in or work with, I guess, this progressive income tax that we also talked about? Right. So with the progressive income tax, you know, you're as your income goes up, you're paying at a higher higher rate, and uh, you know there's deductions and adjustments and so forth. So there's an effective tax rate that goes up and up, and um, as your income rises, um, I think at a federal level, the effective tax rises to about 22 percent. But then you then you after about four hundred thousand dollars of income, those people then have more and more a percentage of their income comes from passive income, capital gains, and dividends. And so that's taxed at a lower rate. And so the effective tax rate falls off um, at, at the top end because they're not being taxed at the 39% rate, they're being taxed at, uh, you know, at more like the 15 or 20% rate.